Yo, yo, it's ODB, our lifestyle podcast, and uh, wanted to hit you with another video. I'm digging in the archives today, and do I have a gem for you guys? Want to thank everyone that continues to rock with us uh, via listening to the podcast every week. You can go out to any of your um, kind of favorite podcast apps, or if you don't listen to podcasts, if you're on an Apple iPhone, just go to the purple pre installed app titled Podcasts and search OLP. If you're on an Android device, easiest way, download Podbean, search OLP or our lifestyle podcast. So again, wanted to hit you guys, it is April and you know how, uh, if you follow us via social media or you listen, you know how dates really ring a bell with me. And pun intended because today I wanna talk a little bit about this amazing 94 Chevrolet truck, Beltec built, for the C, that it debuted at SEMA 93, and it became the poster child, if you will, uh, for Belltech. Now, a guy by the name of Rick Hendrick shot this, the photographer, my understanding, not the, uh, the racing legend. And um, this, my guess, was shot possibly early in 94, um, because it debuted at SEMA. Obviously, California, they got year-round awesome weather, but. Uh, my guess is you got some ladies on here. Uh, Tiffany and Brooke actually made it on the cover. And uh, we'll obviously dive into the feature itself here. But, you know, you kind of have this atmosphere of summertime. So uh, my assumption being that this was the April issue, typically show coverage took about eh, six months or so to appear. But if this was set up, you know, maybe early 94, um, I can imagine obviously they turned this around quick and uh, made it into or on the cover of April 9 So this was about the time I was really heavily starting to read magazines, including Mini Truckin, which many of you know was the spinoff of Truckin. That started in 88, really ramped up in 89, and of course continued through 2014. Now with Truckin, obviously they had this long history of running in the early days many vans, and of course, into the 80s and the 90s, um, the sport truck movement really took off. And you had, uh, you know, uh, legends, the guys that would become legends like Boyd Coddington that actually uh, made the wheels, the steering wheel, and a lot of other things. Now, this truck features 17-inch wheels by 14 wide. It is a Phantom Dually. And uh, for, you know, those that don't know, the Phantom Duallys, they basically, instead of having the two rear wheels... It had the one single rear wheel, and you can imagine 14 inch wide, pretty freaking kick ass. One thing that um, is a tie in to this video the homie that I recently had on the podcast, Tim Davis, you know, we had become friends over the past few years talking at shows and whatnot. He's got um, obviously an amazing mini truck now. He's no stranger to the 88 to 98s, uh, or really the sport truck and truck industry because. He worked at Hunter's during really the peak of what many of us kind of feel uh, of this truck era. So uh, he worked at Hunter's. He talks about that on the latest episode of the podcast, episode 232. And Tim also had a 1500 that graced the cover of a magazine in July 99, which was called uh, Chevy Trucks, I believe it was. The other cool thing is uh, Tim, being that he worked at Hunter's, and he's been an enthusiast really since the late 80s. He's obviously collected a lot of cool stuff. One of the things I've been looking for for a long time was an original poster of this uh, truck. Now, it was titled Orange Fantasy. And obviously, it kind of had to tie in with the ladies on the poster, which we'll show. And then, of course, you had uh, the, two that, uh, the two ladies that also made it into the, on the cover. Now... One thing that was always cool to me about it is the colors of the truck. So you kind of had that California vibe. Obviously, you had that really awesome polished billet wheel. But overall, you kind of had a simple truck, which was um, quite the thing of the era, just to not have to be so crazy, you know, kind of mild stock interior and uh, just that right stance, of course, with Belltech products. And um, on top of that, you have just a killer uh, wheel uh, tire combo. Now, I also want to give a huge shout out to Belltech. Uh, Belltech not only supports the scene, they've really gotten behind what we're doing over at Street Trucks. 
Of course, I was asked by Chris and Nicole to help um, essentially MC some of these events nationwide. And I know Belltech's a big supporter of that, so I thank them very much. Also, they uh, took care of one of our homies, uh, young up-and-comer Colin. And uh, if you had happened to see the video that we did last year in October from Southeast Mini Truck and Nationals, uh, uh, thankfully to Street Trucks, they live streamed it on their Facebook channel. And that's when Brian gave the uh, truck to his son, Colin. Now, Colin is obviously in high school. And many of us remember back to our time then and uh, his dad picked up a really cool square body S10, and we're gonna help tell that story here um, in the near future on the podcast. So shout out to Colin, shout out to Brian, and of course, um, thanks to Belltech for getting behind the scene and doing what they do. I know our homie Ben Smith, he also, I think last year had won uh, a Belltech challenge that was going on, so I thought that was pretty awesome as well. It just so happens that Belltech obviously uh, is out there and supporting the scene all these years later. I believe they originated in 83. So they're coming up on their 40th anniversary. So shout out and respect to those guys. So I'll kind of show you the feature here. Um, one of the things that I really like about this truck um, that's on page 106 is you got that classic 88 to 98 front end. You had the smooth bumper. And it didn't even go crazy. I mean, you don't see any kind of billet wipers or, you know, the wipers removed. You literally just see an awesome 88 to 98 truck, which in this case is a 94. Now, again, they did build this truck uh, for SEMA and it debuted in 93. Uh, you can imagine back then the, the internet wasn't what it is. Um, really, I don't even know if it existed technically. Um, but we all know that we pretty much weren't on it. And uh, the amount of photos that are out there, it's really tough to find things of this era. So uh, you have the dude kind of looking back that's in the driver's seat. Uh, Carrie Stevens did the write-up. And it's, again, titled Orange Fantasy. Belltech uh, builds an ultimate California beach cruising phantom. You got the dude, you got two surfboards on it. So you got uh, two, uh, one guy giving a thumbs up with his board, kind of hitchhiking. And then you got the other dude that's like looking at the chicks and then you have the other basically four guys over on the bench area and they're checking out the chicks now uh for those scoring at home you basically have six women in the bed of this pickup it's kind of hard to see the girl that's in the crease of the magazine she has her left hand up uh her as well as the girl on the very far back with her left hand up uh actually the two looks like the only two ladies waving they're the two that actually made it on the cover, which was kind of cool. So in the lower right, we have photography, Rich Hendrick. So I stand, stand corrected on that. It's Rich Hendrick. And uh, of course, it's Belltech owned for, out of Fresno, California. It's a 90 Chevy. Uh, you have on the back, it says rear of the bed was fitted with uh, Callaway ZR1 Corvette style roll pan complemented by a flat tailgate smooth or uh, made smooth by the addition of the handle relocator. All Belltech products, of course. So they played a role not only in the um, era of, you know, the lowering components, but uh, for those that may not recall, they also did sell other, other pieces. Uh, you see the rear wheel here, so you can kind of see that it's a single rear wheel. You have the iconic Boyd wheels with the center cap. And then in the dash, uh, you pretty much see it looks like it has bucket seats, which you would expect from kind of a sport truck. But everything is stock for the most part from what you can see other than the Boyd steering wheel. Now, I know there was a little bit of stereo done in this thing as well. It says, uh, of course, uh, there's a CD player and uh, they've added a few other kind of small things. Clean front end. Now, the other cool thing about this is um, from a from a magazine feature standpoint, it literally was only four pages, which kind of was unheard of, but I think it reinforces um, how, you know, the, the basic build that it was. Now I say basic with all respect, because again, this era, that's what it was about. You didn't have to have a crazy, you know, full frame and body dropped and things like that. The essence of this sport truck era was the right stance, nice set of wheels, and obviously some components, which we talked about here with the roll pan, obviously the shaved uh, one mod on the, the kind of the ass end of the truck. I think it's iconic because it really 
captures that time period. And um, the homie Tim, he recently um, helped me kind of end a quest that I've been on to find an original poster of this. Now, some of you probably grew up, depending on if your mom, dad were into this kind of stuff, and maybe you had some of these, you know, Nitto posters or Beltec and whatnot. I did not. Uh, where I was living in Landa Lakes, I was lucky to find a BMX magazine or maybe trucking. But uh, my quest is over. Thank you so much to Tim Davis. Uh, he has hooked me up with a Belltech poster. And it's an OG one. I'll be showing that in a future video. And I'm super excited about it. I'd love to either get uh, Rich, let me say it right, Rich Hendrick to sign it if he's still around or anyone that was involved, any of the ladies, the dude driving the truck um, or someone at Belltech that maybe helped uh, you know, set this feature up or was involved in the build. I mean, I just love this stuff. You guys know I do. And um, that's kind of it. Now I'm digging over here. Again, there's so many great issues. I think oftentimes many of us go, hey, we miss mini truck and magazine. Well, I tell people all the time, you got All Time Low magazine. It's arguably even you know, more robust than Mini Trucking was because you know they, they have, they're not kind of under the corporate thumb. They can expand their pages, they can add in, uh, pull out posters when they want. Um, it really just all hinges on you know the success of the magazine. And uh, although we all loved Mini Trucking magazine, All Time Low magazine is out there and you could go to atlmagazine.com and check it out. Uh, you can order individual issues, which do tend to sell out, or of course, pick up uh, the subscription that they offer. Now, uh, one interesting fact here, I've mentioned this before on the podcast, this is actually my OG, um, one of the first issues I can ever remember owning. I read the magazine in the grocery store, uh, obviously growing up, you know, and I'm sure that probably maybe I had a couple of other ones that I can't really, you know, remember or recall. But this May 93, so next month is the anniversary of this one. And uh, this is one of the first issues I can remember ever owning. And uh, it's probably one of the reasons why I love these trucks so much. The 88 to 98s, of course, the Dooleys as well. This one was titled Fat Fendered uh, Heavy Haulers. And you have the boat in the back. You have the Phantom Grill. Uh, you have the, of course, 88 to 98, rocking some Alcoa wheels. And uh, of course, one thing, even at my young age, I was looking going, man, I love that the mirrors were color matched. You had the pillars that were painted black, uh, the OG early 88 to 98 seats and interior in it. But um, this is awesome stuff to me. And then here's one other one I'll show you. This was October, or no, excuse me, November of 90. And uh, this had has a vintage Boyd, since we're speaking about Boyd Coddington, this has a vintage Boyd ad on the back. You see Boyd there. But uh, so much history here with all of these magazines, and uh, I know we've said it before, but we gotta definitely be thankful to uh, Steve Stilwell and some of the early founding fathers, if you will, of Truckin' Magazine, uh, how it merged from, you know, or emerged from the vans of the 70s into the kind of the, the truck movement, uh, and then later into the, the sport truck movement, obviously mini trucking. And uh, it was pretty cool. If you look at sport truck and mini trucking, they kind of span off at about the same time within that year or two uh, period. So definitely super thankful to them. We're hoping to tell additional stories and allow them to tell their story on the podcast. But when you really live, look back in the archives and um, you, you know you, you take a look at some of the guys that were shooting these features and these ads and these companies like Belltech that have been around again going on 40 years, it's uh, pretty awesome. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed me reminiscing a little bit. Again, thank you so much to Tim Davis. If you haven't listened to episode 232, do yourself a favor. Tim is a great guy, really uh, kind of an ambassador, if you will, to the truck scene. Uh, he's done a lot, and I know he's got a lot more up his sleeve that he wants to do. So to Tim, to all of our RA family out there, and uh, to all of the people, the OGs that, that give, have given us all of this great content all of these years, from ODB and, of course, my co-host, Biggity Mike, the mayor, he's out in Gallivanton, uh, we say thank you. And I think that's it. ODB, it's been, this has been ODB's Corner. 
We out here.